And our next speaker is Renato Asunsao from Universidad Federal de Minas Gerais. Um, we are a bit late with our schedule and we had to start on time the, the talk from Bencho, so we are not going to do um, questions in the spotlight. Please uh, ask the, the questions uh, them for the, for the speakers in, in other moments, because we are a bit late in, in, the, in the... And the break is going to be very short. And the break is going to be, yeah, we are a bit late and we need to be on time here for Bencho's talk will be, that will be remote. Uh, the context is AI for social good. And before I start explaining the problem, let me just say where I come from. Uh, Belo Horizonte is a city in the middle of, of Brazil. It's a very large town, it's a very large city, three million inhabitants, and with some very nice landscape. Uh, the university is just beside the stadium, and we have some nice views. This is not from my office, but uh, it's nearby. And the city is nice, has a landscape, and nearby we have some historical towns oh, with oh, the oh. history of Brazil right there. And UFMG itself has a, a nice campus. The students have a lot of green areas to go around. Our department is a large one with 60 faculty members and uh, we have a, have a very high rank in the evaluation of computer science departments in Brazil. And, uh, but beside, uh, and uh, some, maybe one some part of the history that is known, uh, Belo Horizonte was the center uh, of this Aquan uh, company that was bought by Google in 2014, and now has a uh, development center there with more than 150 people working, and also is, uh, is the place of Hekima, the, one of the Kipu sponsors here. Uh, <clears throat> but besides some of these nice uh, issues or topics, uh, we also have a lot of social problems as all the Latin American cities, and this is not so nice to see, but we have to deal with these problems and try to do something about it. One of the problems that affect the populations here is dengue. It's a viral disease, it's transmitted by a mosquito, and after feeding from one infected uh, person, this mosquito starts transmitting to other people and when, he bite, when it bites. The symptoms uh, last for about uh, one week and uh, seldom leads to death, but it's a very painful uh, disease and lasts for a few, day, a few days, and it can really uh, lead to death. The preventive control measures are very, you know, very poor. It's basically avoid uh, collecting uh, uh, water because these are breeding sites for the mosquitoes. The dengue numbers are very high. It affects basically all the tropical uh, belt in the world. And if you see here the numbers in Brazil, the, it reaching more than one million and a half people affected by dengue in one year, in 2015. So it, it's an important disease, and what we try to look is uh, where, can we, where are we getting dengue? Uh, the, the point is, how can we find the zones where the mosquito is biting people more often than uh, in other areas? So there would be these places where people are getting infected, and then maybe the, the uh, public health officials can do something, going there, cleaning, looking for the breeding sites, uh, cleaning the area, stopping with the uh, pools of water that are uh, uh, still in the, in the region. So where are these, these locations? Um, <clears throat> 
Maybe if they are outside your residence area, uh, the, the, these public health officials cannot find them because there is no information about where people are moving around in the city. So basically, the only information that we really have when someone gets the disease is where he lives, he or she lives. So if you are catching this disease on these areas, no way that we can find them. So in this project, we are interested on the dengue infection, the place where you are getting infected by the mosquito. Identify these high-risk areas. We want to use the mobility patterns of the disease cases and to contrast them with the other people, with the movements of the other people who do not get the disease. And for this, we use Twitter data because it's publicly available. So we have this Observatório da Dengue where we collect uh, geo-referenced uh, data from Twitter. And I, this picture here shows in a very schematic way uh, what is the idea of the method that we developed, the algorithm. So each, each polygonal line is one individual. And we have their marks showing where these people have been tweeting. Um, <clears throat> we color these lines, these individuals, in two colors. The red ones are the people who got the disease. And we find this because some tweet, in some point in time, a tweet mentions the dengue in a way that, uh, using NLP, we identify that person as having a personal experience with dengue. The other, the blue ones, are the people who we collect the data and they don't seem to have had any um, dengue personal um, uh, experience. So the intuition now is to go scanning on this map and looking for the several different zones that I uh, uh, label here as Z, the different geographical zones in different positions and different sizes, and to see which are the zones where, the, in some way, there are much more, many more um, red dots than blue dots. The real data is, is not as in this schematic thing that I showed. It's, 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 it's much more messy, and then we need computers. So there are a few challenges here. Some of them are data set challenges. I will go, I skip that. And the methodological challenges are more difficult. Is one is we just discovered that the number of positions, the tweets that each person has, um, it, uh, it's a very important uh, uh, variable that we have to control for that. Also, the incubation period and the recovery, because of incubation period and in recovery uh, time, uh, disinfected people typically, when they tweet about having the disease, they are not really uh, disease anymore. The, the disease has affected them at some point. In, uh, I mean, the infected uh, time is, is a different one from the time when they are uh, uh, tweeting. So that's why we are looking for the entire polygonal line connecting that individual, looking for his entire movement rather than just looking at the tweets where we identify them as as disease people. So <clears throat> the time is running fast here, but let's just give you some very quick idea uh, of um, <clears throat> what we did. Basically, we contrast two types of probability. We, we have more than one model. Let me just comment here about two of them. One we call visit model, and the other is the infection model. The visit model, the idea is, given that someone is a case, is a diseased person, what is the probability that he tweeting from a zone Z. Then we scan, you change Z, and try to find a, a, a region where this probability is maximum in some way. And the other probability is just changing the two events. So rather than probability of A given B, we are looking at now probability of B given A, which is given that someone tweets, let's say K tweets from a zone Z, what is the probability that he is a case? So again, we now go uh, searching, scanning the region, trying to find a zone Z where this probability is maximum. Now, <clears throat> uh, we, we, as I, I mentioned before, one very important thing is that we need to contrast to, uh, we need to control for the number of tweets that someone has. Imagine that uh, we have two individuals, one with 1,000 tweets during uh, one year or two years of, 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 of analysis, and another one with only one, on 10, 000, 10 tweets. 
So the individual, everything else equal, the individual with a thousand tweets is much more likely to show up as a diseased case than the one with the 10 tweets. So the, it's essential to control for the number of, of tweets. Um, and we basically, just showing here very quickly um, some of the, the technical difficulties, we, we define G of Ni as this, uh, this ratio here that depends on the number of tweets that a person has. And this G and I is a completely arbitrary and unspecified function. And it shows as the, log or the, the odds of someone being a disease uh, rather than a control individual. So now, if we add the, uh, a, a, a variable, that is the amount, the proportion of time is spent on a putative zone, uh, a, a candidate zone to be a, a, a cluster, uh, this, this uh, function is changed, and we just have it multiplied here by the proportional risk of being on zone Z. So we are looking for zone Z where that parameter beta is large. This would indicate that the, the region is really a, a potential risk zone. So um, <clears throat> basically what we did is controlling for the number of NI, the number of tweets, we get one individual who has, set, let's say, 100 tweets. We get in approximately an, another bunch of individuals who are not diseased with also 100 tweets. And now what we get is the probability that, that that individual that is diseased is the diseased, really the disease case compared to the other ones is given by these uh, probabilities that I'm showing here. And at the very end, what we have is something that is called a proportional risks model where that un un unidentified, unspecified uh, function G of Ni disappears from the expression and we can really do some uh, inference on, on that. Now, <coughs> uh, time is really running short, so we, we basically, we just permute now the labels among these people who has uh, controlled the number of, of, of uh, tweets. We just uh, randomly permute the labels of who is the disease case and who is not. We scan the area, find the, the maximum likelihood in, under these uh, pseudo maps, and we contrast with what we found with the, the, the true data. So just showing here quickly now um, a result for one specific city, which is important because it has a very strong surge of, um, <coughs> of dengue in 2015 and had only 14, uh, 400 cases in 2014. In 2015, had more than 50,000 cases. And <coughs> so, what we found with our method is this, uh, this rectangles that we are showing here on the map. And if you see what these rectangles means, you see that many of these places are parks, hospitals, college campus, so areas which would not be recognized by uh, the usual public health uh, methods and surveillance methods. So we got here some publications out of this, and of course there are a lot of limitations on that. One of them, the main one, is the quality of data from Twitter for both things. One is for tracking the movements of people. This is really bad, but that's what we have uh, now. And the other is uh, the quality of the data to, uh, uh, to identify someone as a disease case. Um, however, we expect that the methodology that we are deriving can be used when we have better data, better quality of, um, um, uh, b b better social network data. And maybe just finishing here, I'm really deciding to put a lot of effort on this problem and this uh, analysis, and there are lots of things. One of them, we are in contact with the public houses in my city, and they will look at the, if the areas that we are pointing out in the city, they, if they are really uh, high-risk areas. So we will have some idea of false positive uh, numbers for our method. Uh, the other is that we are also getting access to the residents of infected cases in, in, in this last year, so we can find if some of the, the spots that we found, uh, if they uh, um, match with the, the residents of these cases. 
We also have a regular grid on the city, and they regularly go every month and count the number of eggs in, this, in the nodes of this regular grid, uh, who, uh, the number of eggs from this mosquito that transmit dengue. So how is this connected with the, the spots that we found, the hot spots? And finally, we are developing an app that uh, we expect that the disease people will carry along with the help of the uh, municipality, the public health municipality, and see if we can um, uh, find uh, better data, collect better data. Finally, I hope this can be used in order for other diseases in other places, and also I hope we can find some funding. I have to thank here Google Research for Latin America that uh, funded us for two years. Uh, with this, I finish, and thank you very much.